over on 40, 44. Mr. Long, if you are ready, we are ready for you. You've got a PowerPoint. I thought it was Mrs. Long's PowerPoint. There was one that said Nancy Long. Um, blah, blah, blah. Are we on? Mr. Chairman, thank you for this opportunity. This, uh, this issue is very much about what we have today, about what we will have tomorrow, and about our future. This issue is, recognizes that Vulcan is a good company, and sand and gravel is good. I like roads too, and I thank Vulcan for showing the slide that shows that God's been very generous with sand and gravel. It's not only located here in the Rappahannock River Valley. But here in the River Valley, we get to decide what we have today and what we will have tomorrow. Moreover, what is the legacy we shall leave the next generation? Most importantly, when it's gone it's gone. You don't put it back. To help us through all this, we as a society have something called zoning. Most especially, our zoning ordinance very specifically cites the resource sensitive area overlay district and its part in the comprehensive plan. This is not a, this is actually a direct site from your zoning ordinance. By creating this direct connection, it really enforces the importance of the resource sensitive area. And so what we need to do is decide what do we value here in Caroline County. The bottom picture, by the way, is what's left of, of Hayfield. It's not Haymont Mine, it's Hayfield Mine. That's what's left we have today. Granted, they'll clean it up some and you'll have a hole in the ground with some water in it. But do we value these other resources? And in deciding whether you value those resources, you have to decide whether if it's okay to approve this is the resource sensitive overlay district, do we really have the right to say you only have the right to build one house per 25 acres to other people? Because doggone it, if you can dig it up and cart it away, then I should have the right to build one house per two acres. And if we do away with all that, then what has become a de facto reservoir overlay district disappears. And by the way, when you go for a permit to pull water from the Rappahannock River, it's at a state and federal level. The Mattapanai Indian tribe fought that for 14 years. Newport Lute News seconds remain. Lost, lost $30 million, and in the process, they didn't get a reservoir. That's the brown waters from washing the sand and gravel. The other stuff at the top is uh, something that's just sitting there. And so that's your water quality. You have to decide what we have today, what you value today, and what is the legacy that you're going to leave this next generation because people, once it's gone, it's gone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Long. Next is Jane Kaiser. Thank you, gentlemen, for the opportunity to speak tonight. Thank you for coming. I, thank you for having me. I am Jane Kaiser. I am the owner of LaGrange Farm. 160-acre farm, which is adjacent to Black Marsh. I do not live in Caroline County, but I do pay taxes here. My uh, family has owned this property since the 1940s. We have a farming operation and a rental house on the property currently. I've known Albert for years, and he's been a great neighbor in the past. However, I am not in support of this sand and gravel mining operation. 
I agree with and support the many reasons that you've heard so far by all the people here about why it should be denied. I'm not going to go over all of them again, but I would say specifically that this is a very environmentally sensitive area. It's surrounded on three sides by water. It's very low land. There's a risk of flooding. I have a concern about this 140-acre pond, which is actually going to be a retention basin one day, being right close to me. My loss of property value, my loss of possible income from not being able to rent my rental house, being next to a sand and gravel mine. It's a resource sensitive overlay district. The proposal calls for this um, pond, which worries me a lot. It also says the comprehensive plan states that this should not adversely affect adjacent properties, which I feel it will adversely affect mine. I really think that this could set a dangerous precedent, and this is the main thing that I want to say to you, is that Excuse me. is that approval of this permit would set a dangerous precedent because if the county approves an operation like this on Black Marsh, they set a pattern for other applications, applications to follow. There will be no stronger arguments pre to present against approval than the ones that are so shown here tonight. The county may not be able to stop the, de the destruction that they start if they approve this. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Thank you very much. Okay, we are on uh, 46 of 78. So let's say we take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 5 after. 3 goes into 60. We can probably do 20 more people afterwards. So we'll be right back after that. Mr. Payne, are you going to address the uh, people that decided not to speak, or is that, is that going to be Mr. Carroll? We have just to make sure. We, um, we have several people who have crossed their name out or said they've decided to not speak, and I think that was at your behest. Is that the case? Mr. Chair Mr. Chairman, there are several folks that have got transportation commitments here tonight and, and, and want to be able to get home on time, and they, they have indicated that they would be, be willing to forego their time, but they okay. didn't want to know that they had speak in favor of this proposal. So, um, so, so the ones I have, um, Mrs. Wachmeister is still there. She was, oh, I'm sorry, no, you're 50. Um, but she was one of the ones that, wouldn't, that decided not to speak. That's correct? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. And then there's Savannah Sneed that won't speak, John Biddle, Amber Knapp, Ruth Mylot, Jackie Smith, Zachary Sampson, Bill Sforza, Robert or Kevin Donald, they've all decided to not speak. Kevin. Okay. Okay. Well, the ones that we've that have scratched out, we'll call your name, and if you decided not to speak, that'll be fine. We are on uh, 46. Just call them out, and if we call your name and you've decided not to speak, you can just wave and say, I decided not to speak. So, Mr. Parton, we will continue where we were. Next up is Lori Ann Reed, followed by John Biddle Sr. and Nancy Long. I, oh. Mrs. Long, when you come up, you're representing the town of Port Royal. 
So you have five minutes? Okay. I appreciate that, but you do have it. We're, we're giving you that courtesy. And again, as a reminder, when you come up to speak, please just state your name and your voting district if you're from Carolina, or you can just tell us what county you're from if you're not from Carolina. I'm sorry, uh, I misread it. Louie Ann Reed is next. Louie Ann Reed is next. That would be me. That would be you? That would be me. <laughs> sorry. Okay, yes, okay. Um, yes, uh, I am a Louie Ann Reed, and I'm a resident of uh, Caroline County, Port Royal District, um, and I am an adjacent uh, property owner of the applicant. Um, have been in my house for 20 years. And Ms. Reed, could you move the mic a little closer to you, please? <laughs> it, it bends. Don't worry okay. about it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, have been in the house for 20 years. Perfect. Okay. Have been in the home for 20 years. Um, and we, uh, the home is um, a house that has, was built in... Uh, 1819, uh, it's an historical property, originally on the Garrett Farm. Uh, the Garrett Farm was split off to make four winds, so um, there is a lot of beautiful land with, with the property. Um, there is also a, um, the house was used during the Civil War as a hospital um, as evidenced by the blood stains on the floor, on the upstairs. Um, the house has been there since 1819, like I said, and the house, when I bought it, has a uh, deed attached, a writing on my deed, which attaches to um, Mr. Vachmeister's deed, which is access to the river um, through his property on the river. So I'm Sorry, I'm a little tired. I've been driving for two days <laughs> um, to get here for this public hearing. Um, I think I came the furthest, so I'm exhausted. So um, uh, I am opposed to this application um, for all the reasons given today, um, but primarily because they do go completely against the comprehensive plan. Um, they Take your time. I ha yes, I'm sorry. Um, I also have considerable financial investment in this home. So in 20 years, I have at least $100,000 invested in the property to make sure that this would be a historical, historically accurate property. So the potential for tourism and the potential for uh, this house as a tourist destination would be completely ruined if I had to be in the same neighborhood as a, um, sorry, a gravel pit. Um, oh God. The comprehensive plan was another part of the 15 seconds. Okay. okay. That's all right. Um, that's the most important issue for me, though, because it goes against the resource-sensitive designation that was established by the residents of uh, this neighborhood, um, which we developed when uh, Haymount was being... Oh, gosh when Haymount was being fought. So um, forgive me <laughs> for stumbling tonight, but um, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Next, John Biddle, Sr., followed by Nancy Long and Wayne Roberts. I'd like for uh, 
Phoebe Wessinger to speak now, and I can take her spot because she has a transportation issue. That's fine. I am Phoebe Wessinger. I live in Caroline County, and I'm speaking here this evening in favor of the proposed application for a special expression by Black Marsh Farm for a sand and gravel facility. As the closest resident in a single family dwelling to be potentially impacted by this proposal, I have researched this request thoroughly. I actually live on the farm closest to this proposal. The opposition I have heard and read to this proposal appears to be extremely disingenuous, hypocritical, and sensationalized. The facts surrounding this proposal have been openly presented and available by Mr. Bachmeister to those concerned or in opposition. Judgments have been made without fact or substantiation. Letters have been written to editors that are so far-fetched that one would expect to see them at a grocery store checkout counter at the National Enquirer. I believe that the most important issue here this evening is to unequivocally determine why there has been such an overt lack of disclosure about the opposition to this proposal. As of this morning, this Caroline County controversy has reached such a level of social and political concern that it has now been aired on G. Gordon Liddy's radio show. How do we have the greatest opposition coming from Moss Neck Farm, excuse me, owned by Judy and Gilbert Shelton, when C-SPAN question and answers with Judy Shelton, renowned economist for the Wall Street Journal, interviewed by Brian Land, speaks, speaks candidly in her interviews of free market capitalism? How do we ignore the mayor of Port Royal, Nancy Long, the spearhead, spearhead of this opposition, whose support is primarily from King George County. The lack of disclosure about her husband's lawsuit against Albert Bachmeister, dismissed with prejudice against Mr. Long, that occurred while these proceedings have been going on. Does anyone here question the possibility of any animosity or any retaliation in extreme effort to, to oppose this permit? Black Marsh Farm has gathered over 750 Caroline County signatures in favor of a project that will create 14 jobs, produce, produce $100,000 worth of revenue annually, which over a 20-year period will result in millions of dollars of revenue for this county. No retail sales will occur from the site. Black Marsh has agreed to a conservation easement preserving 541 acres for development in perpetuity. 15 seconds remaining. No dewatering of the mine pit will occur, and therefore groundwater and wells will not be affected. Air quality concerns. This will be a wet process facility. No fugitive dust emission anticipated with watering tricks keeping the dust down. When the board feels satisfied that all of these accusations, concerns, and most importantly, facts are honestly evaluated here, this should be a well-created source of revenue and business opportunity for Caroline County. Thank you. Thank you. You have a PowerPoint? Yes. Well, that's loading up. I just wanted to make one statement. It's nice to meet you, Phoebe. Um, I would recommend that when you write a letter concerning two people that you speak to both sides and get both sides uh, of the Mrs. story. Ms. Long, well, thank you for your objection, but you're out of order, of course. That, that's my job. Um, Mrs. Long, let's, let's just work on what we have here. Oh, I was talking to her. You can yes. feel free to talk to her as soon as you finish your gotcha. five minutes. Gotcha. Very good. All right. Okay. Here we go. You ready? I am ready. Okay. All right, why would we re approve the request for Black Marsh Farm? Okay, here we go. I told you I'd have problems. All right. You just push the ah, page. Ah, there we go. There you go. All right. 
As far as my speaking here tonight, I'm here as the mayor of town of Port Royal. The board approved a comprehensive plan, a zoning ordinance, and in the comprehensive plan there was a community plan from several different areas. There was a plan for the Port Royal um, community. That plan was developed from members from as, um, Port Vega Bay all the way down the corridor uh, to as close to Essex County line as the Board of Supervisors at that time, Mr. Uh, Taylor, could, could find. A lot of work was put into that comprehensive plan. That is why the town council uh, voted unanimously to send a resolution of opposition to this uh, against this mine to the Board of Supervisors. This is a map of the geographic features in the county. Here we are right here, Port Rolls down here. As you see, the whole corridor is, is full of sand and gravel. We've got stone here, we've got sand and gravel here. If we dig everything up that we have in Caroline County, we're not going to be left with much, which is, in your wisdom, why you decided to place a resource-sensitive area along of the Rappahannock River in Caroline County. You know, Port Royal is, is not the only place, as I said, with sand and gravel, but we are sort of the smallest, and we're sort of isolated. We're sort of behind the pack in the food, tra in food uh, chain. But, you know, when they finish with us, they're going to move. And as we know, we have minerals on the west side of the county and throughout. So this is not just a Port Royal issue. We know we've uh, wanted to do access to the river. These are the types of things that we need to do. And as the county should recognize these resources and give merit and protection in the Commonwealth Scenic Rivers and the Scenic Road programs. We all need water. Caroline County needs to update its water supply and distribution. The county will require additional groundwater resources in the near future. We're also pursuing an intake water from the Rappahannock River if we need to in the future. All these things you are very well aware of. We need to identify, conserve, and protect our important natural resources. I won't read all of these in, but I will point out this one right here to encourage the preservation of agricultural lands in scenic areas, environmental sensitive areas, uh, conservation easements such as uh, Count Bachmeister and um, Emmett Sneed have done are good uh, examples of that. Uh, we are very lucky to have a beautiful open space area along the corridor. And we need to continue to educate the public on other ways to preserve and finance the county. Let's see, out of here, let me pick the one I've, I've bold lighted. Seek alliances and partnerships, both within and outside the county, in order to improve the county's programs and initiatives and to prove overall success. We've heard from two other counties um, in uh, opposition of this proposal. And then we need to assume a leadership role regarding the conservation, protection, and preservation of its, the Caroline County's, important natural resources. The resource-sensitive area uh, called the corridor is very unique. Um, we have lots of significant uh, wetlands, lots of uh, different species, of games and, and animals and endangered species. And the corridor also contains some of the best agricultural soils in Virginia, which is why a large part of it is agricultural preservation. Why would we? Well, we would not at least not according to these words. Every word of information that is on this presentation comes directly from your comprehensive plan, which you adopted uh, in 2010. Fifteen seconds remaining. The Citizen's Guide, that's what the comprehensive plan is. It's the Citizen's Guide to you to lead this county into the future, to protect what is precious to us, what is needed for our future generations, as well as moving forward both financially and scenically. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Thank you, Mrs. Long. Thank you, Mayor Long.
Next is Wayne Roberts, followed by Mike Taylor and Sophie Bachmeister. Good evening. I hope I can stay awake long enough to finish this. I'm hoping the same thing, too, <laughs> but if, if <laughs> you'll, done. Do, if you'll do us a favor and pull the mic down a little bit so we can hear All you better, right. thank we'll, you. We'll get this over as quickly as we can. My name is Wayne Roberts. I'm the general manager for the Four Winds Club. I'm also a resident of the Caroline County. Uh, our club has over 600 members, all of whom own property in Caroline County. Uh, and we are opposed to this mining operation. The mining operation is directly across from our golf course, our restaurant, and our camping area. If you approve this mining application, it will have a negative effect on the income we receive from people playing golf using the restaurant and camping area due to the noise and the dust that this project is going to create. The mining operation is scheduled to take place seven days a week for 12 hours each day and for a period of between 20 and 25 years. During the day, the dust, sound from the backup alarms, and mining equipment will travel throughout the golf course and our campground. People come to the golf course and the campground to get away from the noise and fast-paced life in the cities. This mining operation is going to take away that peace and quiet we have enjoyed for more than 30 years and is going to adversely affect the club's income. Although the proposal indicates that a water truck would be used, there's going to be some dust we are called four winds for a reason. Those winds are going to carry that dust into our buildings and onto our golf course. The club operates on three wells that are located throughout the property. There is the possibility of the water level in these wells being lowered, or in a worst case scenario, the dredging operation could dry up the wells. If we lose our wells, we are out of business. If the club goes out of business, the county will lose more than $50,000 that we pay in taxes each year. We ask that you consider our concerns and accept the recommendation of the Planning Commission and deny this permit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Now, you, you said you live at Four Winds? I have a place at Four Winds, yes. Okay. That's not where you live, though. No, I have a home in Hanover County. Okay. Thank yeah. you, sir. Next is Mike Taylor, followed by Sophie Bachmeister and Savannah Sneed. My name is Mike Taylor. Um, I'm, I live in Essex County. I do own property and pay taxes in Caroline County at Four Winds. Um, I've listened to a lot of things that a lot of different people have said here. And the one thing I'm not hearing is, is uh, that much of is, why are people coming to this area? Why do they come to the area down here? It's because they, tr they want to get away from the rat race. I know, I used to live in DC for 25 years. I moved down to Tappahannock to get away from it. To get away from Tappahannock, as a kid, I used to uh, camp up at Four Winds with friends. I bought property up there to get away from Tappahannock. Five minute rush hour in the evening. Um, other people, they're on 10 acre lots out here. Uh, they built nice homes because they want to get away from the rat race. Okay? All, a lot of these areas overlook this entire section that, that, is wanted, uh, that they want to uh, make into a, uh, a, a dredging uh, pit. Um, one of, the, one of the, uh, the other things that I look at, I also sit on the board of directors down at Four Winds. I'm the treasurer. 
$50,000 in taxes that we pay the county, that the membership and the club pay the county, that's real low. Um, that's conservative. Um, the presentation that was made by Vulcan, they had their nice presentation, uh, slideshow, about where berms are going to be and things like that. But I mean, they never talked about the, the outline where our golf course is, okay? Where that big lake or drainage pool is going to materialize. If water, if it's going to make a pool, that's going to be the deepest ex excavation. The most work, the most noise will happen in that area. Um, the board of directors at Four Winds was elected to protect the members. And the board doesn't want this to happen because of the, the dust, the noise, um, the, uh, the impact that can happen by driving away customers, owners. Um, it's, it's unfortunate. I mean, everybody's entitled to do what they want to do. That's the way I feel about it. But 15 seconds remaining. When you, when you start affecting other, other people, then you have to start watching out. Um, I just, I, I, I don't think it's a very good idea. I, I really don't. Um, you know, 14 jobs, I guarantee you they're going to bring them all in. Um, 100K in taxes to the county. We've already had other counties talk about 7,000 and so on. I, I, I don't see it. Uh, you need to really look strong at what's being presented to you. Mr. Roberts, before you go, Taylor. Um, excuse me? Taylor. Taylor, I'm sorry. That's it's 1130. I don't even remember my name. I understand. Name. Um, I'm trying to recall, I think only that part three, that whole, whole number eight, and maybe nine and 18 border Mr. Wachmeister's property. Is that right? Well, look, kind of looking at the map, it looks like it's going to wrap around our, our golf course. So it's parallel to, well, the, the river comes like this. The golf course is right here. The road is right here. It looks like that whole area is going to be, I mean, I haven't studied it. I'm just going by what, what I saw on their area of photographs. Okay. And That's it looks like it's going to come right up against it. They always concentrated about the berms on the other sides and up against the river. They never mentioned anything about around us. So there should be berms on that side? Well, okay. there should be something. Okay. I'm not supposed uh, to do I a okay. conversation. I just had a question. So okay. thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Who is next? Good evening. I'm going to keep this short and sweet for you. My name is Sufi Bachmeister, and I was raised on Black Marsh Farm. I urge you to support my father's and Vulcan's decision to extract sand and gravel on the property. I've watched my dad try to achieve, as cliche as it sounds, his American dream, and he has worked incredibly hard. It is only fair to allow him to keep going for his goal. No one should be able to dictate what he wants to do with his land. I'm only 17 and fresh out of high school, but I know that people have rights, and as long as they are following the law, they should be able to do as they wish. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Savannah Sneed, followed by John Biddle Sr., I believe, uh, then Amber Knapp. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, My name Ms. is Savannah Sneed, and I live in Caroline County near Black Marsh Farms. I'm in support of this mining permit, not only because of the benefits it's going to bring to Caroline County, as mentioned before, but also because I've known the Bachmeisters for several years, personally, and I believe their character is commendable. The proposed operation has been set up in such a way that will allow them to remain good stewards of the land and preserve it for the future. Thank you for your time and um, consideration. Thank you very much. Chairman, board members, thank you for listening to me tonight. Uh, my name is John Biddle, Jr. I'm 21 years old. I live at uh, 1224. Oh, don't, don't tell us exactly where, just uh, <laughs> neighborhood. Black, Black Marsh Drive. I live on the farm. And uh, I'm 21 years old, unemployed. I need a uh, 
need a job. Uh, I want to have a job and work for a living. I feel I feel that when you guys approve this sand and gravel mine, I can have a good job with good benefits and uh, get a good job. And uh, this job will provide me with good benefits and good wages for me. I can build a future here in Caroline County near my house. Please approve this so my generation in Caroline County can have jobs. That's what I, we need here in my upcoming life and all the kids my age we uh, need jobs. We like to work for a living and I appreciate you guys listening to me and uh, please please do it for my sake and my futures my future. Thank you. You guys have a good evening. Thank you for coming. Next is Amber Knapp, followed by Ruth Mylott, Sam Stallard. Good evening. Thank you for your time. I reside in Stafford County, but I spend a majority of my time at the Four Winds Campground. I have strongly done my research up and down, and I'm totally in favor of this. Please vote yes. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Who is next? Next is Ruth Mylott, Sam Stallard, and John Stoddard. Ruth Mylott. You're obviously not Ruth, so. That is correct. Okay. So we take it Ruth has passed. All right. Go right ahead, sir. Hello, my name's Sam Stallard, and currently I live in Enrico County. Um, for the past 20 plus years, I've worked for Carter Machinery, the Caterpillar dealer in the state of Virginia. Uh, on a personal level, my wife and her parents are lifelong residents of Caroline County, and currently my wife, our two small children, and I live within three miles of Vulcan Materials Royal Stone Plant. I can tell you that they have been nothing short of professional in their mining practices. Um, Aside from some additional truck traffic in the area, I can sincerely say that they have been great neighbors. Obviously, truck traffic will not be an issue at Black Marsh Farms, and as the sand will be barged. Uh, from a professional level, Carter Machinery Company employs roughly 500 people in the central Virginia area and over 1,100 throughout the state of Virginia. One of the major reasons we were able to keep our workforce intact through these tough economic times is companies like Vulcan Materials and the continued business relationship both of us enjoy. Vulcan Materials is a big part of our success. In addition, Vulcan Materials typically tries to hire locally, and with the Black Marsh facility expecting to hire roughly 14 people, this can only add to Caroline County's success. A couple of points here, and I'll close. In the Caterpillar world, Vulcan Materials is known as an aggregate industries leader for their approach to safety and production, but more importantly, an industry leader in being stewards of the environment. Their commitment to producing materials with as little disturbance as possible, coupled with their leadership in land reclamation, is well known and recognized in the industry. In closing, I would like to stress that allowing this project to move forward is a win-win for all parties involved. Vulcan Materials will produce tax revenue for the county with little disturbance, but more importantly, in my opinion, Vulcan will return the land in as good a or better shape than what they found it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. After John Stoddard, we have Jackie Smith and Zachary Sampson. My name is John Stoddard. I'm from the Port Royal District. Currently, I serve as the Port Royal District representative on the Caroline Industrial Development Authority. I come before this board tonight to voice my support for Mr. Vachmeister and Vulcan Materials on their request for the special exemption permit. 
For over a quarter of a century, Mr. Vachmeister has been a landholder, a valued citizen, and a taxpayer of the Port Royal District. He has proven himself in the agricultural community as a leader in the use of innovative technologies and sound business practices. He has shown that he has a deep and abiding respect for the land and its importance for the Caroline economy. Vulcan Materials, a Fortune 500 company, and listed as one of America's most admired company, has also proven themselves as a leader in industry. They are ranked among the top 10 companies in the U.S. for social responsibility and the use of corporate assets. The members of this board, our Director of Economic Development, and the IDA have worked hard to promote Carolina as a business-friendly community. We have been able to entice the State Fair of Virginia to locate here, thus providing a sound base of tourist dollars in revenue for the county. Recently, the McKesson Company, a Fortune 14 company, has located their East Coast base of operation in Caroline, providing jobs and tax revenue generated from manufacturing and machinery. In this post-9-11 economy, it is essential that a county such as ours develops a sound business model uh, utilizing the resources it has. By diversifying our economic base, Carolina is developing a strong hedge against market downturns and global recessions. I believe the approval of this permit will add another level of protection to the citizens of Caroline against the wild swings in this economy. There will be a continuing need for the product that Vulcan will produce. This need will continue to produce jobs and revenue stream for Caroline, which will be a benefit to all of our citizens. By approving this request, it does not mean that this board is writing the applicant a blank check. The concerns that have been raised tonight will be governed by local, state, and federal laws. I believe Vulcan Material has presented a plan that will comply with these laws, ordinances, and regulations. By allowing this system of checks and balances to work, I believe this project can be carried out with minimal visual and environmental impacts, provide jobs and revenue for the county, set aside green space and wetland habitat for future generations, and return the land to productive seconds, farmland, Jermaine. which preserves integrity of the current comprehensive plan. In closing, I thank you gentlemen for your foresight, your hard work, your dedication for making Caroline a great place to live, as well as a business-friendly community. By adding Vulcan materials to our business family, I believe Caroline will continue to grow and prosper. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Stoddard. Next three speakers are Jackie Smith, Zachary Sampson, and, and Bill Sforzo. Jackie Smith. Next. Jackie Smith's not here. Next is Zachary Sampson. Chairman. I'd like to um, give my spot to Rob Arnold in place of me as there's some transportation issues. If that's okay with you. Thank you, sir. Now, there's no buses running around here, so I'm not sure what the transportation issues are. Uh, I'm just go a right little, little pressed on the transportation. It's a, kind of a long story. Well, Mr. Chairman, board members, um, I stand before you here now to um, express my very big disappointment. I am sorely, sorely disappointed because I've been following, loosely following the career uh, of Judy Shelton. Um, and let's, I, just, let's just stick to you're in favor of the project, you're against the project, <clears throat> why you're in favor sure, or against. Sure. The reason why, the, my disappointment is the basis of, of why I'm for let's it. Let's so stick to your desire to say you like the project, you don't like the project, why you don't. Well, it's the reason why I like this project is because I'm for the entrepreneurial spirit. I am for uh, entrepreneurship. I extol the virtues, as some of us do, uh, of entrepreneurship. And I praise um, the system. Uh, I give great praise for the way this system works, uh, with entrepreneurship being a very big part of a very big component of the way things work in our society. At the end of the day, what we're saying here is that a man who owns land 